This is the operational video for the 7000 and 8000 precision cut fairway mowers. The latest generation of lightweight and productive machines for mowing golf course fairways from John Deere. We will show you how to operate the 7500 and 7700 as well as the 8500 and 8700 precision cut fairway mowers correctly and safely. We will also give you some machine maintenance information and set up an adjustment information for our standard 22 inch cutting units. Along with our heavy duty extra strength and precision or ESP cutting units. Remember, you are responsible for your own safety and the safety of those around you. Safety should be the first thing you think of when operating any machine on the golf course. Always wear your seatbelt on the precision cut fairway mowers or any equipment that has a rollover protection structure. Since we won't cover everything in this video you need to know, be sure to read the printed operator's manual before mowing with the precision cut mower. The operator's manual is available in Spanish as well as other languages. Please contact your distributor if other languages are needed. This video also contains a Spanish version. We'll start with a look at the operating controls and features. Always enter and exit the operator station from the front of the machine and fasten your seat belt. The comfortable seat has standard armrests, a fore and aft adjustment to accommodate both tall and short operators, an adjustment for operator weight, and an adjustment that raises and lowers the seat, and a seat back and lumbar support adjustment. All important controls and indicator lights on the precision cut fairway mowers are located on the command arm within convenient reach of your right hand as you sit in the seat. The controls and lights include the ignition switch, the headlight switch, warning light indicator module containing all warning lights and the hour meter, optional cruise control switch, throttle lever, mow transport lever, and the lift lower lever. On the warning light module, lights will illuminate briefly when you start the engine. If the hydraulic oil temperature light comes on while you are mowing, the cutting units will shut off automatically. You should then stop the machine, turn off the cutting units, and let the engine idle to cool the hydraulic oil. If the engine oil pressure light comes on, shut off the engine to avoid serious damage. If the battery light illuminates, it means the battery isn't charging. Drive back to the maintenance shop and have the problem checked out. If the engine coolant temperature light illuminates, pull to the side of the fairway and let the engine idle to cool down. Notify your technician about any of these problems. Do not continue mowing. The engine air preheat indicator is an amber light that will glow for about 3 to 5 seconds when you turn the key switch to run. The hydraulic oil filter pressure indicator is a red light if the light illuminates and remains lit while mowing, the hydraulic filter is restricted and needs replacing. Push the throttle lever forward to increase engine speed and back to decrease engine speed. Push the mow transport lever forward to engage the cutting units and back to disengage them. When mowing with the mow transport lever in the forward position, you'll notice that the cutting units will only raise halfway when making turns. This cross-cut feature makes turning and mowing across the fairway much faster and you more productive. When the mow transport lever is disengaged, pull back and hold the lift lower lever to completely raise the cutting units to the transport position. Release the lever when the cutting units reach the full up position. To use the one-touch lift lower control when mowing, simply push and release the lift lower lever forward to lower the cutting units. Then pull the lever back and release it to raise them. At your right foot are the hydrostatic foot control pedals. Press the left pedal to go forward. Press the right pedal to reverse. The upper pedal is the parking brake and behind the steering column on the floor of the platform is the parking brake lock. To engage the park brake, engage the brake with your right foot and press down on park brake lock with your left foot. Remove your right foot from the brake pedal first, then release the lock. The pedal will remain in the locked position. To release the brake, push the brake forward with your right foot until lock is released. On the bottom left side of the steering column is the steering column tilt control. Using your left foot, depress the lever and adjust the steering column to a comfortable position. The precision cut mowers have a standard two post ROPS or rollover protective structure. You must always wear your seatbelt low and snug when operating the mower to minimize your chance of injury from an accident. When working, your first line of defense against injury is wearing proper clothing for the job. 
Proper clothing includes heavy work shoes, long pants, safety glasses, a hard hat, and hearing protection. Depending on the work you are doing and the procedures at your golf course, you may also want to wear a long sleeved shirt, sunscreen, and work gloves. Always start with a walk-around inspection before mowing. Make sure hardware is tight and guards and shields are in place and in good condition. Look under the machine and check for oil, fuel, or coolant leaks. Make sure all warning decals are readable. Tell your golf course technician or equipment manager if there are any missing or damaged decals. Inspect the cutting units to make sure they are in good shape. With gloves on, check the blades and bed knife for nicks or signs of wear or damage. Have any damaged, worn, or missing parts repaired or replaced, and necessary adjustments made before mowing. Check the tire pressure and the condition of the tires. The operator's manual lists the recommended air pressure for each tire. Before starting the engine, open the hood, pull the dipstick, and check the engine oil level to make sure it is in the safe area on the dipstick. Check the hydraulic oil level. This is best done when the oil is cold. Make sure the level is in the safe area on the dipstick. Also, check the engine coolant level using the overflow bottle. If the engine is warm, the coolant should be between the indicated lines. If any of these fluid levels are low, top them off or have the service technician do it before you mow. Check and clean debris from the radiator fins, hydraulic oil cooler, and grill screen. Check the fuel gauge to make sure there's enough diesel fuel to get through the day. Climb aboard, fasten your seatbelt, start the engine, and check the brakes. Again, have any problems serviced before mowing. Training is important. If you are new to operating the precision cut, practice operation in an unobstructed area under direction of a qualified operator before mowing out on the golf course. Your training should also include time operating on slopes under direction of a qualified operator to understand how to mow slopes safely and determine what slopes are not safe to mow. The precision cut fairway mowers have an ignition interlock safety system installed. To start the engine, the mow transport lever must be in the transport position. The hydrostatic drive pedals must be in neutral, and you should be sitting in the seat, and the park brake must be engaged or locked. It is recommended that you test these systems before mowing. See your operator's manual for instructions on testing these systems and making sure the machine is running normally. If you find a problem while testing, do not operate the machine and notify your technician or equipment manager. Now that we've covered the pre-start checks, here are some tips on starting and operating the precision cut fairway mowers. To start the engine, fasten your seatbelt snugly. Check that the park brake is locked. All operating controls are in neutral. The mow transport lever is in the transport position. Push the throttle lever forward to one quarter of full engine speed and turn the key to on. The glow plug preheat indicator will illuminate for three to five seconds. Then turn the key to start the engine, then move the throttle to full speed. Let the engine run a few minutes to warm up the hydraulic fluid. When you're ready to go, raise the cutting units. Lock the front wing cutting units in place. Release the parking brake and press the forward foot pedal. The farther you push the pedal, the faster you'll go. To go backwards, look behind you and slowly press the reverse pedal. When you take your foot off the pedals, the machine will slow to a stop. On slopes, you may also need to use the brake to stop the machine. To transport out to mow, raise the cutting units and lock the front wing units in place using the transport locks. When transporting, use the cart paths when possible. Always transport at a slow and easy speed. Do not drive or mow over ground where traction or stability is an issue. If you have to move off the cart path, proceed slowly and avoid rough ground. Never allow riders and be careful when driving on or crossing roadways. Use extreme caution when transporting or operating on slopes. Mow and transport straight up slopes, not across. Avoid quick stops and reduce your speed, particularly if the grass is wet, which increases the danger of mowing slopes. When you arrive at the mowing site, park the mower safely off to the side, inspect the area, and identify what areas are unsafe to mow. Also, walk the fairway to remove any signs, bunker rakes, or debris that could damage the cutting units or ruin the quality of cut. Pay special attention to any drop-offs into bunkers or bodies of water as well as any embankments or slopes. 
These areas may not be safe to mow. Always consider topography and turf conditions when deciding what areas are safe to mow. Plan your mowing pattern to avoid any unsafe areas. When mowing close to these unsafe areas, adjust your machine speed to allow you to operate your machine safely. Loss of control accidents and rollovers are a major cause of injury or death. Make the safe choice. When you are ready to mow, climb aboard. Unlock the cutting units. Adjust the steering column. Fasten your seatbelt. Start the engine. Disengage the brake. And push the throttle to full. With the cutting units raised, move to the edge of the fairway and place your foot on the brake. Now lower your cutting units, push the yellow mow transport lever to the mow position, and then raise your cutting units. Never engage or disengage the mow transport lever when cutting units are raised or when the forward reverse pedals are depressed. This will damage the mow transport cable. To mow, continue on to the fairway. As the cutting units cross the edge of the fairway, push the lift lower lever forward to lower them. The reels will lower and begin rotating. To keep you from cutting into the edge of the fairway, the front cutting units will lower to the ground before the rear units. Always mow at safe speeds. Mowing too fast can be dangerous and will result in a poor quality of cut. Also, stay alert for people entering the mowing area. At the end of your pass, pull back on the lift lower lever before the front units reach the taller grass to raise the cutting units and turn. If room allows, make a gentle looping turn. If not, make a Y turn and line up your next pass. As the front cutting units enter the fairway, push the lift lower lever forward to lower them. The front units will lower first. Overlap your previous pass by a few inches. If your mower has an optional all-wheel drive system, it will always be in all-wheel drive when you are mowing or in transport. If your mower has optional cruise control, push the forward travel pedal until you reach your mowing speed. Push the cruise control switch forward to center position to engage it. Then push the switch completely forward to set your speed. Push on the parking brake pedal or push the switch back to disengage cruise control. Always keep your foot on the traction pedal when disengaging to bring the unit to a gradual stop. Remember, use caution when mowing around bunkers, water features, ledges, or embankments. Before mowing near water, make sure the ground is not too wet, soft, slippery, or unstable. Be careful when mowing slopes, mow straight up and down sloped areas. Keep all movements slow and gradual, and avoid starting, stopping, or turning on slopes. Also, do not mow slopes when the grass is wet. As you mow, watch the quality of cut to make sure the mower is cutting correctly. Also, pay attention to the machine and how it operates. In particular, watch for hydraulic leaks. Hot hydraulic oil will kill the grass. If you see a leak, stop mowing and move off into the deep rough. Turn off the engine and contact your supervisor. When you are finished mowing the fairway, move into the rough, engage the park brake, lower your cutting units. The cutting units will not come on with the brake engaged. Move your mow transport lever to transport. Raise your cutting units to the transport position and lock your wing units in place. You are now ready to transport to your next fairway. When you're done mowing, transport back to the maintenance area. Stop safely on level ground, set the parking brake, unlock and lower the cutting units. Throttle the engine down and let it idle for a short time to cool. Then turn the engine off and remove the key from the ignition. After the engine has cooled, open the hood and use low pressure compressed air to clean the radiator and oil cooler. Water causes grass material to cake between the fins. Blow parallel to the fins to prevent damage. Damaged fins can reduce cooling efficiency of the radiator. On the 8500 and 8700, the intercooler needs to be cleaned as well. Also, blow away any grass that has collected on the machine. Over time, decaying grass left here can damage components and paint. Use low pressure water to wash the cutting units. A high pressure power washer could force grease out of the bearings and actually damage some parts. Do not spray cold water on a hot engine block. After washing, grease all roller and reel bearings. This helps purge debris and water from these critical bearings. Other weekly lubrication should be done according to the operator's manual. It is also a good idea to refuel at the end of each day. Fill the tank with fresh diesel fuel. See the operator's manual for more information on fueling safety. And be sure to read the safety section of the operator's manual before mowing. 
This completes the operator instruction section of this video. We designed the John Deere Precision Cut Fairway Mowers for easy service. Please refer to your operator's manual for your engine and hydraulic oil and filter intervals. Lubrication is also fast and easy. Check the operator's manual for locations and intervals for all lubrication fittings. Check the air filter restriction indicator periodically. In dusty conditions, check it daily. The air restriction indicator tells you the air filter is working. The air filter will last longer and work more efficiently if you replace it only when the indicator reaches the red zone. Replace the paper element when indicated by the air restriction indicator. The radiator uses a 50-50 mix of ethylene glycol and clean water. Dirty or incorrect radiator fluid can damage the engine block. All precision cut fairway mowers have standard hydraulic down pressure to help keep the cutting units in contact with the turf for a consistent height of cut. Down pressure is only recommended to be used on the 7500 and 8500 precision cut mowers. Check with your supervisor for proper use of down pressure on your machine. To use the down pressure system, be sure the machine is in transport, then pull back on the lift lever until the lift cylinder bracket contacts the lift arm pin. Install down pressure pin through the hole located in the cylinder bracket. Do this for the front two lift cylinders. To activate down pressure, lower the cutting units to the ground. For the rear cutting units, remove the down pressure pin from the top of the loss motion linkage. Rotate the rear down pressure strap to the up position and insert down pressure pin. This will be done for the left and right rear lift arm. To remove down pressure from the system, remove each of the down pressure pins for the front lift arms and rotate the down pressure strap on the rear cutting units to the down position. You can service both the standard and ESP cutting units in the flat position. You should also use this position to make rear roller adjustments. We'll start with the adjustments for the standard cutting units. Always make the bed knife to reel adjustment first. To start, you must produce drag on the reel from the bed knife by first loosening the adjuster towers counterclockwise and then tightening the jam nuts at the same time to take up the slack. Next, turn the jam nuts and tower nuts clockwise on both sides of the reel to pull the bed knife away from the reel. While at the same time, use a feeler gauge to set the proper clearance of one to two thousandths of an inch between bed knife and reel. When you reach the correct clearance, tighten the tower nuts to lock the adjustment in place. Next, to parallel the front roller with the bed knife, only if the front roller has been moved, position the center bolt of a three bolt adjusting gauge bar over the front edge of the bed knife at the fixed adjuster end of the roller. Adjust the bottom bolt until it rests against the surface of the bed knife. Now, loosen the bottom nut on the other end of the front roller and the lock nut on the eccentric. Then, rotate the eccentric nut to raise or lower the roller to the gauge as needed. Tighten the bottom nut. Then, tighten the eccentric nut to lock into place. Now, for the height of cut adjustment. Loosen the lock nuts on each side so the roller can be moved up and down. Set the center bolt on the adjusting gauge bar to the desired cutting height. Place the adjusting gauge bar with the center bolt head over the front of the bed knife and the end of the bar resting against the front roller. Turn the adjuster on one side to make contact, then adjust the other end. Recheck both sides before tightening the locking nuts. Remember, always make the final adjustment so that you are moving the roller down to the gauge bar. This will make it less likely that the height of cut will change in the field. It's a good practice to recheck the bed knife to reel clearance before mowing. For easy access, all ESP cutting units feature our patented Rotate for Service or RFS suspension. To use RFS, using one hand pull up on the cutting unit yoke to remove weight from the RFS spring. Use your other hand to push the spring lever down on the front cutting units to retract the retaining pins. Do not use your foot or you could damage the system. On the rear cutting units, there are three additional steps. Remove the pin that holds the cutting unit upstop on the machine and then remove the upstop. Pull back the pin, which limits how far the unit can pivot, and place the long leg of the pin in the channel on the arm. Then turn the cutting unit outward and press down on the RFS spring as you did with the front cutting units. Do the same with the other rear cutting units. With the mower safely parked, start the engine and pull back the lift lower lever to raise the cutting units. Then shut off the engine, 
the cutting unit should be pointing up. Push the spring lever back up to the normal position. Then pull each cutting unit to its service position so the pins align with the back hole location and lock the unit in place. Lock the rear cutting units in place facing the side. Restart the engine and lower the cutting units so the back roller is on the floor. This stabilizes them for servicing. You can adjust the cutting units while they are mounted on the machine or the bench. We'll make adjustments with the units on the machine, starting with the reel-to-bed knife adjustment. You should check the reel-to-bed knife for damage and check the setting every day. Also, check it before and after backlapping. To check the setting, slowly rotate the reel. The reel-to-bed knife clearance should be one to two thousandths of an inch. And it should be uniform across the entire length of the bed knife. The reel should cut paper and leave a smooth, sheared edge. If the edge is jagged, the cutting unit should be backlapped or reground. Incidental contact between the reel and bed knife is acceptable, but sustained or constant contact will cause premature wear of the cutting edges and will require more engine horsepower and increases fuel consumption. The reel should be adjusted to the bed knife until it touches and then backed away to one to two thousandths of an inch. To move the reel toward the bed knife, simply loosen the adjusting tower one flat and tighten the jam nut one flat. This adjustment should be done evenly to each side of the reel until each side touches the bed knife. Then reverse the procedure to pull the reel away from the bed knife until you reach a clearance of one to two thousandths of an inch. Check your reel to bed knife clearance throughout your adjustment at both ends of the reel. You should finish with a consistent one to two thousandth gap between the reel and bed knife. Next, let's cover the height of cut adjustment for the ESP cutting units. Loosen this nut on each adjuster. Each notch on the adjuster is a sixteenth of an inch or a 1.5 millimeter change in the height of cut. For example, to change the cut height from 0.5 inches or 13 millimeters to 0.625 inches or 16.1 millimeters, move the front and rear rollers down one notch at all four corners and you're ready to cut. If you want to change cutting height as little as 1 16th of an inch or 1.5 millimeters, simply move one notch in the front and leave the back alone. Make sure there's never more than one notch difference between front and back or the cutting geometry will be affected. For fine tuning adjustments of less than 1 16th of an inch or 1.5 millimeters, or to check for parallelism, use the gauge bar. Set the gauge bolts for the desired height of cut. Set the bar against both rollers and check the cutting height on the maintained ends of the rollers. Adjust these two nuts to fine tune the height of cut. Once the height of cut is uniform across the bed knife, make sure the locking nuts are tight. The best way to backlap on these machines is with the cutting units in the normal operating position. To begin, make sure the brake is engaged, then start the engine and set the throttle on low idle. There are two backlap valves, one for the front cutting units and one for the rear. Press the release button and pull the yellow knob out until the release button pops back out. Then turn the speed control knob clockwise to one. Repeat the process on the other backlap valve. Engage the PTO and push the lift lower lever forward to start the cutting units. Use a long handled brush to apply the compound uniformly from one end of the reel to the other. Turn the speed control knob to adjust the speed. The reel should run backwards slowly enough so the sharpening compound won't be thrown off, but fast enough to hold a consistent speed. When the blades are sharp, wash the reels thoroughly with water while they are still running in reverse. Push the knobs back to the normal position and turn the speed control knob fully counterclockwise. Don't use the speed control knob to turn the reels off. The John Deere Precision Cut Fairway Mowers are the finest, most productive mowing machines for fairways you can buy. With proper operation and regular maintenance using genuine John Deere parts and lubricants, you'll get years of service from your investment. Remember, the information provided here is only an overview. Be sure to read the operator's manual before operating, servicing, or making any adjustments to the Precision Cut Fairway Mowers. And most important, always think safety when operating or maintaining any machine. If you have any questions or problems, be sure to contact your local John Deere distributor. Thank you for watching.
Este es el video operacional para las cortadoras de Fairways Precision Cut 7000 y 8000, la última generación de máquinas de peso ligero y productivas de John Deere para cortar los Fairways de los campos de golf. Le mostraremos a usted cómo puede operar las 7500 y 7700, así como las cortadoras de Fairways Precision Cut 8500 y 8700, correcta y seguramente. También les daremos alguna información de estas máquinas sobre mantenimiento, así como información sobre ajustes y montaje de nuestras unidades de corte de 22 pulgadas junto con nuestras unidades de corte de trabajo pesado, extra fuerte y precisión o ESP. Recuerde que usted es responsable de su propia seguridad y la de los que estén cerca de usted. La seguridad debe ser la primera cosa en que piense cuando opere cualquier máquina en el campo de golf. Siempre use su cinturón del asiento en las cortadoras de Fairway Precision Cut o cualquier equipo que tenga una estructura de protección en vuelcos. Como no cubriremos en este video todo lo que usted debe saber, asegúrese de leer su manual impreso del operador antes de cortar con la cortadora Precision Cut. El manual del operador está disponible en español, tanto como en otras lenguas. Contacte a su distribuidor si necesita otros lenguajes. Este video también contiene la versión en español. Empezaremos con una mirada a los controles de operación y las características. Siempre entre y salga del espacio del operador por el frente de la máquina y ajustese el cinturón del asiento. El confortable asiento trae descanso de brazos estándar. Un ajuste para adelante y atrás acomoda a los operadores grandes y pequeños y tiene ajustes para el peso del operador y un ajuste para levantar y bajar el asiento. Y un ajuste para el soporte de la espalda y la región lumbar. Todos los controles importantes y luces indicadoras en las cortadoras de Fairways Precision Cut están localizadas en el brazo del comando, dentro de conveniente alcance de su mano, mientras ocupa el asiento. Los controles y luces incluyen el interruptor de arranque, el de las luces frontales, módulo de luces de advertencia y el metro horario. El interruptor opcional de control de crucero, palanca del acelerador, palanca de corte transporte y palanca de alzar y bajar. En el módulo de luces de advertencia, las luces se encenderán brevemente cuando arranque el motor. Si la luz de temperatura del aceite hidráulico se enciende mientras corta, 